Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another exciting video. Today we have something pretty special. This, my friends, is the EXP GDC 8.0 external graphics card docking station for your laptop. So, let's get right into it. Now, this has been out for a while now, and the way it works is basically you have the graphics card installed in here, and you have a power supply, a regular power supply, or an AC adapter that you could use to power this thing, and you have one of three options, but mainly you're probably going to choose one of these two options right here. So, here we have an express card, and this is mainly used on old laptops such as ThinkPads that have an express card or first generation Intel i core series, or you will be using this guy right here, and that is the MSATA PCIe connector. And on the other side, they actually use a standard HDMI port, but do not mistake this for a regular HDMI, that will not work. They just use this connector because of its convenience. So what this thing will allow you to do is pretty much run on these bad boys, or these little guys, on your old laptop. Now this is going to be an exciting video series that I've been wanting to make for the longest time and basically we're going to be testing out a bunch of different graphics cards and different laptops and different combinations and see what kind of performance we can get. And yes there are 3D printable cases that you can find available on Thingiverse that you can print out and we're going to be trying some of them out and one of them actually supports a full size power supply like the one that we have right over here. And we're going to pretty much be trying out all of these guys in the next upcoming videos of this series. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first video. And in this video, we're going to be trying out the little cards that we have right here on my trusty T400 ThinkPad. So let's get right into it. Alright, so you're probably wondering, is this compatible with your laptop? Well, if you have an older laptop, such as my ThinkPad here, that has a Core 2 Duo CPU, or this HP right here that has a first generation i3 processor, then you should be good to go. And pretty much most of the workstation laptops, they have this port. And let me show you, basically these two right here are workstation laptops, so you can tell from the design and how they look, and you can pretty much search up on Google which laptop has an express card. But the easiest way is to check on the side of your laptop, it could be on the right, it could be on the left. For example, on this HP laptop, this is something you probably have wondered for the longest time on what this thing is. Usually this is where they store the remote control for the media, so usually old laptops, they had an option of a infrared remote control, you can pause and play and change the volume for whatever you're watching, but that is long gone. And that used to be a thing when Windows XP was available, and then it just started fading off eventually with Windows 7 and whatnot. But anyways, uh, that's what it looks like. You can see how big it is, so that's pretty much how long it is. And Express cards, they were cool for a bit. Back then, most people used them for wireless connections because old laptops did not have any wireless. And you can like get an extra USB port with these, but that is how pretty much how you connect it. You hook it up on your side of the laptop, you hook it up to the dock, and you're good to go. But in this video, we're not going to be trying it out on the i3 Pro Book. We're going to be trying it out on my trusty T400 ThinkPad. Now, in the case of my ThinkPad, it actually has two card slots, one of them being the 34mm Express card, which is the one that we have right over here. And the other one is actually a 54 millimeter, I believe. And it pretty much fills up this whole space right there. All right, enough talk. Let's go ahead and plug it in here and to charge. And the other thing is we're gonna be using the uh, small power supply that I have here. This one is from a shuttle PC. It's a 350 watt power supply and we're just gonna be using it because it's easier to work with. So we're gonna have the card go right in here at the top slot and you can feel it click right there, just like that. And if you wanna take it out, it's very easy. Just click that and push it out like so, very simple. Next up, you want to take your HDMI port and hook it up to the side of the HDMI. There's only one place. So the card goes in there, and then the other side goes to the HDMI connection, just like that. Then you want to take your power supply, and you want to take your connector that comes with the dock station, and hook it up to your main line, which is the 24-pin uh, connector. And in this connector, you will put your 12-volt 4-pin CPU connector, just like that. And finally, this one goes right into here. Very simple and straightforward. Now the connector here is a PCIe out and it's an additional connector you can buy for around $6 extra. I'm not too sure, maybe it's $10. And this whole thing is actually 50 bucks. You don't have to buy this connector unless you want some convenience or if your power supply does not even have the connector, then that connector would come in handy. But in this video, we're gonna be testing out my GTX 745 low profile graphics card. All right, so we actually fast forward to the next morning and last night a lot happened while trying to figure out what's going on while trying to test out the first card that I have here and that is the GTX 745 here. It's a pretty good card, but the problem is it seems like Nvidia doesn't want to work on the Express card here. But I did get the PCIe Mini to work on another laptop, which is my other Lenovo one, and uh, the Nvidia card did read and it worked fine. But that was about two weeks ago. So of course we have tested the GTX 745, we have tested the 7400, but it's an AMD card and it's really annoying to set up and install the drivers. Now you're probably wondering why do I have this ProBook now? And that's because my T400 already has a AMD video card and AMD and ATI drivers are so annoying to install, it's such a pain. There were some conflicting issues between the two cards. ProBook we have here only has an Intel graphics card. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and hope for the best and by running the Sapphire Tri-X R9 280X graphics card. 
All right, and once again, this card doesn't want to work. All right, so we are going to be skipping the Express card since it did not work with the laptops that I have in the configuration. So now we're going to go ahead and try out the PCIe Mini, which I did have some success with it. And I only got up to running an external display on this Lenovo laptop. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy up and show you guys how to set this up. And yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so for this one, you want to actually find out how to take apart your laptop because you're going to have to go inside the internals to hook up this connector. And you're going to have to give up your internal wireless adapter and use a USB wireless adapter. And it really depends on your own laptop, on what kind of laptop you have, and if it supports two PCIe mini ports. Uh, for example, here, by the way, this used to be a broken laptop that I fixed. Uh, you have a connector right here, and you have a connector right there. This is probably where you can connect your MSATA SSD. And if you hook up your graphics card in here, it would simply not work. It won't read at all. So what we're going to have to do is go ahead and take apart your wireless card here and put it aside. Now you no longer have wireless built into this guy. And then you want to go ahead and install the connector and just, you can tape it down. You can just screw it in there. Now, first you want to try this and make sure that it works. And after you find out that it does work and while doing this, you want to make sure that this laptop is going to be a stationary laptop. And you're going to make a little hole somewhere on the side of the laptop to pass this port through it. We're just going to put the cover on like this lightly. We're not going to screw it in or anything. And just put it aside like so. Hook up the battery and hook it up here. We're actually going to go ahead and install one more thing. And that would be this SSD because the hard drive that I have installed on this thing, it's pretty damn slow. And you notice with this one, the uh, laptop doesn't actually hiccup and shut itself down when the card is installed it just boots up normally. With the Express card, once you have it installed and try to boot up, the BIOS doesn't even start up, it just shuts down right away. And of course, since this SSD hasn't been in the system before, we're gonna have to install the drivers for the whole system, including the Intel drivers. And uh, we're gonna be right back, and we're gonna have all those drivers installed, and we're gonna be trying out some games, and hopefully this time it'll work. All right, let's go. All right, and finally, we have both cards installed, all the drivers are set up and ready to go, and most importantly, we have the G4 GTX 780 installed right there. And we have, of course, the NVIDIA control panel, which means now we can go ahead and switch the graphics between the Intel and the NVIDIA one. It took forever, and that's all because of the Express card. I'll find out what's going on with that, what causes that issue. But anyways, right over here in the NVIDIA control panel, it's much easier to do than the AMD control panel to switch the graphics. In AMD, you gotta select some power settings and then select each game to be specifically launched using the external graphics card. In NVIDIA, you simply just select that with a simple drop menu. We're gonna go ahead and do integrated graphics and hook up my external four terabyte Steam drive. So the first test we're gonna do is just quickly play some Rocket League using the integrated graphics, see how it turns out, and then we're gonna be playing it with the GTX 780 external card, and I've just launched Fraps, and here we go. So we are getting about 12 frames on the menu, and it'll just turn off everything and keep it at native resolution, playing it on lowest settings, but native resolution. Uh, in the menus, we're getting about 34, 36 FPS, about 40s and the game simply looks horrible so let's go in and go to free play so here's what it looks like it looks horrible of course and we're getting about 24 fps and that's just with one player all right and we're getting about the same frames actually just uh, about five frames less depending on how it fluctuates but at least these are consistent frames which kind of makes it playable not really so enough of that let's go ahead and switch to the high performance gtx 780 graphics card all right, so it seems like if you want to use the internal display, you got to do some complicated process or something. We'll find out how to do that later in the next videos. So what we have done here is actually move everything here down to this desk and hooked up everything again once again. So we're going to be testing that out here. And of course, you can see the graphics card is hooked up and hooked up through a DVI and that DVI is going to this monitor. And it seems like everything is working fine now. And what I have done is set this monitor as the main display. So we can make sure that we're getting the performance that we need from the right display. Now this is a 1080p panel, this is a 720p panel. And yeah, let's see what kind of performance we can get. Finally, hopefully this is it because I know this video has been all over the place. So let's go ahead and launch the game. We are getting 150 frames. And now that is with the resolution of the laptop. Now let's go ahead and change that back to 1080p and click apply. And check that out, we are still getting pretty nice frames. All right, so now we can go to quality setting and see what performance we can get. And let's put everything on max settings, turn that on. Wow, check it out guys. This is smooth as butter. Oh yeah. Okay, so we have dropped to about 60s or 50s, 70s, still playable. Of course, this is with maximum settings, I mean, we have pretty much turned on everything on max settings. Let's go ahead and drop it to something more respectable and playable. 
let's put that to quality, put that to quality, and click apply. And I gotta say, it is very, very playable. I mean, we're getting really nice frames right now. And I'm playing very awkwardly with the keyboard and mouse on the side of this desk. And so far, I'm getting a bit of hiccups here and there, but it's fine. It is very playable. Yeah, actually everything has smoothed out right now. When I first started, I was having some issues here and there, probably because of the CPU, but hey, it's doing perfectly fine. Now, granted, this is an optimized game, so let's go ahead and play a game like GTA 5 and see if we can get anything near playable frame rates. All right, so GTA 5. Uh, we're indoors, single player, and here are the settings. And pretty much everything on maximum settings. So right now we're getting about 50 FPS indoors. It's pretty smooth, and it looks really gorgeous. And now we're outdoors, we are getting 36 FPS. It's uh, consistent frames, which is good, which means it's playable. If it fluctuates like crazy, then that's not good. And let's go ahead and drop the settings because when I actually launched the game, it told me that the CPU wasn't supported and that it didn't meet the requirements. So let's go ahead and drop the settings to something more moderate, like medium settings. And keep in mind, we're running on an i3 youth processor. That is a low power Ultrabook i3. It uses less power and it's much less powerful than a regular i3. All right, so now we're running the games on uh, normal settings without any anti-aliasing whatsoever. And the game is, seems to still have the kind of glitch issues. And that could be because of the hard drive, because right now I'm actually running the game off my external hard drive. And that's why some of the textures are not loading up uh, right away. But now it seems fine. So yeah, DX11, normal settings, and still getting about 40. So that could be a bottleneck because of the CPU. So now we're running at 720p. And we are still getting the same performance about 30 FPS. Let's go ahead and take a look on this laptop and open up Task Manager while the game is running. And yeah, we're still getting 38, 32 FPS on 1080p. So, is the game playable? Yeah, it's actually pretty playable. Remember, this is an Ultrabook with a low-powered i3 CPU. So I would suggest having an i5 at least to try this out. Um, but overall, we're actually not doing bad at all. I mean, you can still tweak the settings here and there. But really, right now in this video, we're just experimenting and seeing if we can even get it to work. And so far, yeah, we got it to work, and we can clearly see that the CPU is being the bottleneck right now. So let's go ahead and play some Twitch shooters such as CSGO, see how the performance is, if it's buttery smooth, if you can play on it like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the game is on native resolution, on auto settings, you can see very low, high, medium, very high, multi-core rendering enabled, and 8x MSAA. So we're in CSGO and we're getting pretty horrible frames right now. The CPU is at 99%. So the first set of settings, it was hovering around 99, 98%. And then on the second set of settings, it was hovering around 95. And now it's hovering around 90 to 93%. Less CPU usage, but we are still getting about the same frames per second. So what I think is happening is we're pretty much getting bottlenecked by the PCI lane that we have on this laptop. And as you guys can see here on Afterburner, the frames are all over the place. And the jumps that you see here are actually from when we are in the menus, trying to change the settings of the game phrases, and the GPU just starts rendering empty frames. But yeah, that is actually pretty much it for testing on this video. Uh, it has taken quite a long time to get to this state. And that is because I was trying to get the express card to work. And a whole day went by trying to get the test card to work. So we're gonna leave that for another day to find out what is going on. But right now we have actually made some pretty nice progress. The uh, graphics card worked and we had some games running properly. But what is left is to try this on another laptop with an i5 processor and hopefully with more lanes or something. And yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So we have all these graphics cards that we have tested and we have found out that although the Express card is easy to install without opening up a laptop, we still had some issues. We probably have to do some kind of BIOS settings, but right now we really don't know what's going on on why the cards weren't detecting properly. For Nvidia cards, they weren't detected at all. The AMD cards, they would be detected, but the drivers won't read the graphics card properly. So we're gonna leave this for another day in another video. Now, as for the PCI mini connector, it's actually fairly easy to connect depending on what laptop you have. It really depends. In the case of this laptop, it is fairly easy to take apart you just take a bunch of screws out and the back just comes out like so and my wireless card is hidden under this usb hub right here and we have actually got some pretty cool performance i mean you got to keep in mind this is an ultrabook and we got a pretty extremely low power cpu and we have saw some pretty bad performance but um it seemed like the performance was actually being bottlenecked by the connector here because when we were dropping the settings we still didn't get much improvement if any at all which is weird 
But if you guys don't, let me know in the comment section. But that's what I think. We're being limited and bottlenecked by the connector here. Now, of course, if you use the NGFF or the M.2X4 slot, that's a different story. You should be getting much, much better performance. But yeah, it was a really cool experiment. It was fun and look forward for more videos of these. The conclusion, what do I really think about this thing? Well, it is actually pretty cool for 50 bucks if you have a laptop and you don't have a desktop and you really want to get into gaming and you just want to experiment and have fun, just like I did right now, then it's a pretty cool thing to get. And I recommend getting the PCIe Mini because it's easy to install, less issues, and the NGFF as well as the M.2X4 connectors they're actually priced way higher, around $80 to $180. For 50 bucks, it's actually a pretty cool alternative and something that is actually usable in, instead of buying a Razer docking station or any of the external graphics card docking stations. And even if you do get those, you still can't use them on your old laptop because those use USB Type-C Thunderbolt. So yeah, that is actually pretty much it. Again, it's a pretty cool thing. And my room is getting really hot. The camera's about to overheat and I have the windows and doors closed. And of course, it is summertime. So I'm being cooked alive right now. But yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. Uh, it was actually fun playing around with this thing. Look forward for more videos of this once I find out things and uh, the, the video is going to be more refined. Once I go ahead and test things out, everything's going to be properly set up. And yeah, look forward for those videos. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and you have learned something new. Uh, if you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.